John Pollock here with John Ramdeen. We have some Bellator action to chat about as they will have a card airing later tonight from Dublin, Ireland, headlined by Satoshi Ishii taking on Mohammed King Mo Lawal. Also, James Gallagher will have his second Bellator fight at 145 pounds. And it's the final Bellator card of the year. It's been quite the year for Bellator when you look at where they were in January yeah. versus today. And also, what's on the horizon for 2017. Yeah, what's cool about uh, Bellator is... It's good for the UFC to have competition because it drives their product up. It forces them to be on their A game. And I don't know if we're seeing the best of Bellator yet, but we, we are. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to appeal to the hardcore fans, the fans by having a fight like Satoshi Ishii and King Mo, which I think the hardcore fans are going to tune into. And then you have uh, Gallagher, who is the SBG kid, who's undefeated. 20 four, years old. 20 years of age. So it's like, oh, this is the... This is the, the Bellator's version of Conor McGregor. You get your fingers crossed that that works out like that. But on top of that, you have other big things going on in the in the Bellator world. The the first show in 2017, huge fight for the Bellator organization, Chael Sonnen and, and Tito Ortiz. And then after that, they're looking at King Mo and Fedor and uh, or King Mo, uh, Matt Mitrione and yeah. Fedor. And King Mo says that he wants the winner of that fight. And I'm sure he get fingers crossed that. You'd be fighting Fedor over Matt Mitrione. No disrespect to Matt Mitrione, but if you want, you're trying to get a victory in this fight game, you'd rather have a victory over Fedor than Matt Mitrione. No disrespect to Matt Mitrione. I feel that Bellator is in a lot better of a position today than they were in January. Where 100%. I mean, we were getting set in January for the Kimbo Slice Dada 5000 fight, which which I'll say, when they announced it, I thought this is this is up Bellator's alley. Yep. It was a fun fight. It ended up being anything but, and it and it had had some awful consequences coming out of it. And this was a year where. They lost their biggest draw in Kimbo Slice, who, who passed away earlier this year. They've gone through a tumultuous period in 2016. But what you're starting to see is some key signings. I, I think Chael Sonnen is a very big of signing course. for them just because he can do a lot more than just fight. He can promote your product effectively. He can be used on the broadcast. Many different positions Chael Sonnen can fill. Rory McDonald, that could be a much-needed entryway into Canada where uh, Bellator is not as, as widely seen as it is in yep. the United States. As well, you're, you're looking at a number of prospects that are coming up. You hope that an Ed Ruth, a Tyrell Fortune, guys like that can really uh, surface in 2017. So you're seeing, I think, a combination of free agent signings and slowly but surely some prospects emerging because there's certainly – uh, a lot to, to gather from Bellator's roster at this point. One of the things they've, they've done, you know, you look two years ago, if you're, you're trying to make your way in mixed martial arts, the, the, there's one goal. If you're a, uh, an athlete and you've, your chosen sport is the game of mixed martial arts, the, the only goal is I need to get to the UFC. That's the goal. Now, a number of years later, that isn't necessarily a goal for all individuals. There are fighters that have been in this game where it's, you know what? The goal is to make some money get myself stable. Wow, they just paid Rory half a million dollars for a fight. Bellator is now in the consciousness of the competitors as well to say, hey, this is viable for my future. So if I go to the UFC and, and look at Joe Duffy being a perfect example, the UFC made him an offer as his contract expired. And he's like, you know, I want to work for the UFC. I want to fight for the, the biggest organization in the world. But the offer that was made isn't the offer that I'm going to take. So that now you have a chance to go over to Bellator and they can make you an offer. You can go to one championship or World Series of Fighting. But everybody, I think, at this stage recognizes that Bellator is the number two organization in the world. And if anybody's going to make a splash, Bellator is going to make a splash. Also, given that it's so television driven, I mean, yeah. certainly they, they definitely have a live event component internationally. They just recently had a very successful show in Israel, as we mentioned. And just Italy. Italy last weekend, yeah. Dublin tonight. But... We never have the discussion of a fighter in Bellator is maybe on the verge of being cut, that there's a guy's back is against the wall, wins and losses. Like, this is a promotion where it's very much personality driven. They want to put together big competitive fights. If you have a name, identity, that is currency in this promotion. 100%. And I think it, it definitely puts uh, more of an emphasis on selling fights, getting attention, getting eyeballs on the product, as opposed to guys that are just so focused on wins and losses where uh, this is a promotion where, yes, it's valued, but I don't think anywhere near where in the UFC you can face a couple of losses, you might be cut. In Bellator, if you have a name attached to you, you do have some job security. I yeah, think. 100%. And Scott Coker just has an understanding of that. A, 
He's a martial artist. That's how he started. That's why he's got such a passion for the game of mixed martial arts. And he's an outstanding promoter. I mean, you look at the fact that he's the one that brought K1 to the U.S., had those shows in Vegas, had a very successful promotion and strike force. Ronda Rousey was his champion. Luke Rockhold was his champion. Nick Diaz was his champion. Robbie Lawler was his champion. Daniel Cormier. The list goes on and on. Uh, who the strike force champions were. Scott Coker has an understanding. You know, business way, works out the way that it does. And now Coker finds himself in, with this mess that is Bellator trying to do the Scott Coker thing. It's just going to take time. And because of the fact that Coker has that martial arts background, he understands what entertains the fans. And on top of that, all the fighters rave about this guy. So people want to work with Scott Coker because he understands that it's not just about wins and losses. You go out, put yourself out there, put on a hell of a show, and even if you lose four fights in a row, I want to have you. It's going to be an interesting year for Bellator. They are clearly the number two promotion in the United States, but making, I feel, some, some inroads in 2016. And 2017, there's a lot of interesting fights on the horizon for them and maybe the biggest key for them, free agents that do become available <laughs> exactly. from the UFC. Lorenz Larkin. Lorenz Larkin, Ryan Bader, two at the forefront. Bellator is coming up later tonight from Dublin, Ireland, featuring Satoshi Ishii and Mohamed King Molawal in the main event.